Pesci, and this is Barnes & Noble Tagged. Here is a wonderful gift to yourself this holiday season. Someone to show you how to cook to achieve maximum pleasure through minimum effort. It's the food maven, Nigella Lawson, and she is going to join us in the Barnes & Noble studio. <laughs> Nigella Lawson gained her interest and knowledge of cooking from watching her mother in the kitchen. With no formal training, Nigella is the first to point out she is not a professional chef. She first established herself on TV in London and then made the leap across the pond to America with her cooking show, Nigella Bites. Along with her introduction to American audiences on TV, they also started to get a healthy appetite for Nigella's cookbooks. Her most well-known titles being How to Be a Domestic Goddess, Nigella Bites, and How to Eat, The Pleasures and Principles of Good Food. And it is with great pleasure that we welcome Nigella Lawson to the Barnes & Noble Studios. Nigella Lawson, you've been tagged. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you. Well, we're thrilled. And I have to tell you, I love the book. And it's just, it's so delicious and as you're reading it you you, you feel so Christmassy and, and as such in the holiday spirit. And the thing that I in reading about you I was interested to read that you really are not don't call yourself an official chef. You're you're oh, someone I who couldn't. absolutely loves to cook. Though. I couldn't. I mean I'm not even an unofficial chef. <laughs> I mean I have uh, I'm just a greedy person who likes cooking and who likes eating. Mm -hmm. And I suppose in a way I find that quite helpful and it gives me a lot when I talk to my readers say mm -hmm. because I have the same sort of difficulties. When I write a recipe, if say, say I'm making a sauce mm -hmm. and it suddenly goes really th runny and I think, oh my God, it's getting runny, what can I do? Yeah, yeah. And then it thickens up. So I know to say, um, don't worry if it goes runny, it will thicken later. Because in a, in a way, I've got the same anxieties as my readers. Now, obviously I cook a lot. So I've got, I've learned in doing this job, but I, I feel it's so strange that people think that cooking is the preserve of the qualified. Mm -hmm. Because it, if you think about it, it's what I always say to people when they say, I can't do this and I can't do that. And well, I can't. I mean, but you know, human beings would have fallen out of the evolutionary loop a long That's time ago <laughs> if you needed a big white hat and knew if you, you know, to be allowed into the kitchen. You know, because cooking really, real cooking, is about the food that you have within a family home. One of the things I enjoyed in the book, too, was a, a, a lot of references to English foods that we may not yeah. be as aware of, including the whole array of English desserts. And there are so many desserts, especially at the holidays, that are so important. The puddings and the yes. fruit cakes that have some of them gotten a bad name here, but they are, the recipes sound delicious. Well, the thing is, in a way, I think fruit cake gets a very bad name here because everyone says how dry it is. Mm -hmm. And the thing about what we call Christmas pudding is it, you've got to imagine it's like a fruit cake that is, because it's steamed, is so incredibly moist and rich. Mm -hmm. And it comes from a time, I suppose, when uh, fresh food was very difficult to get all the time. So it's made with dried fruits, which were really all that were available. Right. And in the old days, actually, you would put you know, animal fats in it. Of course, nowadays that would not be considered <laughs> great. I mean, I'm all for it, but yeah. anyway. Um, but, the th but the spices are the so spices that uh, are full of, you know, the old trading roots and the cinnamon and the cloves and the allspice. And to me that, you know, I just have to smell that. It's like a, a scent in the air. I want to read this to you because I love this. I read this quote about your book. It says, Nigella's Christmas is guaranteed to bring comfort and joy and make sure the season of goodwill stays that way. <laughs> now, <laughs> is it possible to actually get through the holidays and have people over and entertain without, you know, going crazy and being a stressed out mess? Not entirely. <laughs> Um, not entirely. Nigella is honest, and we <laughs> love that about her. Yeah. You know, the thing is, you can reduce stress. The thing, the why, why Christmas and all the holidays are stressful, it's not just about the food. It's the two things which I think are both so important in life, but also so difficult, and that's food mm -hmm. family. Yes. Um, bring, and then they're brought together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, of course, it's a very combustible time. Yeah. But... I think but you have a whole chapter two on entertaining around the of holidays, course. and I love that they were these meals that you make kind of in the afternoon. And I loved you said, just lay the silverware and the plates on the table and let everybody grab I their own. I'm a great believer in that. I'm, I think that you have to set the tone, you have to be relaxed, and if that means dispensing with 
say, an appetizer, dispense with it. I mean, in a sense, we take too much lead from restaurants where there are three courses. Mm -hmm. You don't have to eat three courses. No. It's not necessary. Yeah. And it is quite difficult if you're having to clear a table after people have had the first course. Don't have a first course. What are you going to have on your table this Christmas? Or do you change? I, well, I change a bit because it's different for us because of not having Thanksgiving. So yeah. we do turkey. Right. But we add something which I think all Americans would think is disgusting, which is bread sauce, which is a kind of Germanic thing. Because Ooh, to the turkey. Well, you see, the, what's quite interesting, in fact, and this is why I think cooking is so fascinating, like you have beef. Yeah. Now, in the old days, protein, and it's still true now, you should think, well, protein is expensive. Mm -hmm. So whenever you had protein, there was always a dish that was really cheap carbohydrate to make it go further. So if you have beef, you have Yorkshire pudding, which is in effect just batter. Okay. If you had chicken or turkey, you would have bread sauce. Well, thank you so much. The book is called Nigella Christmas, and it is great. I am so hungry just talking <laughs> about all of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here's a tag close-up. In the days of recession and economic woes, this is one book whose glorious photos will remind you there is plenty to celebrate. <laughs> National Geographic's Live, Laugh, Celebrate is a glorious collection of celebrations from around the world. But they are all meaningful and beautifully captured in pictures and in the elegant text supplied by award-winning writer Ferdinand Protzman. This lavish and generous collection of photographs and accompanying essays showcases 150 full-color images, some new and never before published, others culled from the National Geographic's archive classics, often pioneering photography. Live, Laugh, Celebrate will put you in the party mood merely by perusing its pages. And P.S. Coat and tie not required. And that's my tag close -up. Every week, I like to tell you about some of the favorites I found in the world of books, movies, and music. And this week, to kick off some holiday spirit, we'll have you spelling, spinning, laughing, and wishing and hoping. Let's get this party started with my top tags for this week. Lighting up my number five tag is how to spell Hanukkah. In this collection, 18 Jewish writers recount their feelings about the merriest of Jewish holidays. The book proves there are as many ways to celebrate Hanukkah as there are to spell it. Toddling into number four is Where is Baby's Dreidel and Where is Baby's Christmas Present? by award-winning illustrator Karen Katz. These two books will keep toddlers busy lifting flaps to find holiday surprises. Laughing all the way to number three is the comedy Four Christmases, out on DVD and Blu-ray. Starring Reese Witherspoon and Vince Vaughn, Four Christmases is a folly of visits to all four of their divorced parents. Caroling its way to number two is My Christmas Deluxe Edition. This is the much anticipated release of Andrea Bocelli's first ever Christmas recording. The CD features duets with special guests and a bonus DVD with highlights from his new concert. And from best-selling author of She's Come Undone and The Hour I First Believed is my number one tag, Wishin' and Hopin', A Christmas Story by Wally Lamb. It's a wise and witty tale of a young boy's Christmas in a blue-collar 1960s Connecticut town. And those are my top tags for this week. Well, Nigella has proven true to her word with a little help from TAG, that is. I think this holiday season I will be able to achieve maximum pleasure through minimum effort. See you next time on Barnes & Noble TAG. <laughs>